All right, and so now that we've talked about some of the basics of how the actual rounds go in a game of infinities, something that you're wondering is, well, to what end am I taking those actions? You know, what are my objectives here? What are my uh, my targets I'm aiming at? And so that's, that's kind of a mixed bag. If you're in story mode, those objectives are going to be contextual to the narrative that's going on. Uh, they might be map-based. They might be you know dealing with your opponents. In skirmish mode, you use a set of cards. And so when you're setting up a skirmish game, you're setting up cards in two columns. Uh, you've got the Genesis circuit that's going to start a column, and you've got the Sands of Var that's going to start a column. And so when you look at these skirmish cards, they, they have a very particular anatomy. You've got, of course, in these boxes, these are individual objectives. Uh, you can see that some objectives can be claimed multiple times because when an objective is completed, the player will go ahead and place one of their tokens over that square to say, I've done that one. Put that back away. So this is an objective that can be completed twice. This one once, this one once. You see that the, the uh, numbers in here are going to change. This is going to be a point value that's claimed once the card's done. When all of those boxes, these four boxes, for example, on any of the cards are completed, at that time, you're going to look at the bottom of the card. And if we're thinking about the anatomy of it, this is the special scoring rule for the card. So before anyone scores any points you're going to do, from the tokens, you're going to do this. So in this case, we're going to look at, okay, if white and red player, you know, they're going to ask, do I have at least one token on the card? If I do, I get to score three points. Super. And then at that point, let's just go ahead and populate. I'm going to use uh, some, some digital movie magic here. Let's say this is how the scoring shook out on on this particular card. This, this is how it ended up getting claimed. So we would say, all right, the players, they both have something on here. Let's go over to our, our scoring track. So each of them get three points, right? Because they, they both follow this, this rule here. Then we're just going to go top to bottom, take these tokens off and score points as we go. So white is going to get one, and they're going to get two. So they're going to get three more points. Red is going to get one, and that one's worth four. So they're going to get five more points. So that card is now scored. The players will take their tokens back into their pools. And then when you when you score a card, you flip it over. Now these world skirmish cards, the one that say Genesis Circuit or Sands of Vara, are going to have a special end of round bonus on the back. And so for end of round, when we do that reset phase, the rift goes off, we get our attribute tracks all settled. Players would also get a point per different type of Genesis Circuit tile they control. So a red one, a blue one, a purple one, a green one, a white one, they can get up to five of those per round, as long as they're controlling a diverse set of tiles in Genesis Circuit. And that's gonna affect them wherever they are in the world, or on the map, I should say. So how do these cards work then as far as your eligibility for completion? Can anyone complete a card? Yes, any leader can complete that Genesis Circuit card, provided that if you look here, you see that tile, that's a faction symbol, and the faction symbol here, that's provided that you're in tiles that have that symbol. That world. So right now, at the start of the game, only the Cable Leviathan here that's sitting in one of those tiles would be eligible for these objectives. You'll see that the cards, when you set the game up, now that we've kind of talked about their anatomy, let's talk about setting them up. You have columns. There's a Genesis Circuit column, which you would add a card to, and a Sands of Vara column that you would add a card to. And I just sort of dealt these out randomly. So all of these cards here, so these two for now, if you're in the Genesis Circuit, you can complete them. If you're not in the Genesis Circuit, these are not eligible objectives for you, and vice versa with the Sands of Vara column. So these are linked to each of the two worlds, essentially. When you start the game, you've got all of these objectives available to you and all of these objectives available to you. My advice to you is if it's your very first time playing the game, what you might do is just go ahead, you know, don't do this, just play with these base cards just so you can get a sense of what am I doing in a turn, but still have some sense of direction, like I'm still trying to move towards something. Right, um, but that might be a way where you just play a game that's a couple of rounds to to find your foot, uh, find your footing, and then you can you can get these uh, settled out here and play. I guess what you could say is like a real skirmish, right? So we've talked about the anatomy of the cards. We've talked about scoring the cards. Let's talk about scoring cards that are not the base ones. So let's say um, reinforce. Let's say it gets all of its tokens on it. If we do the scoring on it again, there's special scoring for each skirmish card do the special scoring, take the tokens off and flip it over, you'll see that these other ones, they don't have any end of round scoring. These are essentially done. What it does do though, is if I complete a Sands of Vara card, that's uh, over here, I'm going to add, oops, I would shuffle my skirmish deck and I'm gonna add another card to the opposite world. So this is kind of to incentivize moving around and getting some objectives completed. And then let's say we go over here 
and we start completing them and we get the Genesis circuit base card completed, we would then shuffle and we would add a third card over to the Sanzavara side. So that's going to be kind of a bit of a back and forth because you want to be going into the different worlds, completing the objectives, crossing back over, completing the objectives of the other world. The game for Skirmish, what determines its ending is not necessarily a point value and not necessarily a round count. It is if all three cards, and you'll see here there's kind of like a dark space where when I'm playing, I go ahead and I put them here like this. When all three cards have been completed on a single world, that's when the game ends. So you would do the scoring for the last card that gets scored, both in its special rules and in pulling those tokens off for those point values. Game ends immediately, even if it's in the middle of a round. Even if it happened from a reaction, you don't go to the next person's action. That's it. So that's essentially the end of game condition here for your skirmish, is completing three cards in a single world. Um, and then whoever has the highest total at the end, of course, is the winner on that scoring track. If there's a tie, you can, of course, add a card uh, to each world. And then the next is basically sudden death, whichever card is the one that uh, is completed next one in the game. Um, if you need to, you can, of course, using rules that's similar to a scoring track like this in, in many, many other games, you can lap the board. So you can go over 50 points if need be. If, for example, you manage to go through all the skirmish cards and somehow manage with a tie and score, which seems very, very, very unlikely, at that point, the game is considered a draw. But uh, with all of the skirmish cards you'd have to go through, for which you would need uh, quite a few, you'd have to go through essentially four per, four per world. Um, it's very, very unlikely that you would end up actually uh, maxing out uh, your cards while staying tied. So that is the long and short of how skirmish mode works. And so what I want to do is, is play a couple rounds out here with uh, with me and my, my dummy character. So let me get these out. So we'll do a, a full game setup, uh, which you know I, I kind of fast forwarded through when we were talking about the, the round structure of the game. We'll talk about setting up the game, and then we'll start playing a couple rounds here. So let me get myself situated. Uh, certainly on this table, I've already got kind of everything laid out, but for you, uh, you might be taking the items out of the box. And so uh, to help you follow along, certainly you'll take the leader that you've selected out. Uh, you'll find your standee base and put your your little guy in there, your standee. So go ahead and slot him in there. This one looks a little different than the physical version. Uh, you'll go ahead and get your three translucent attribute cubes and you'll put them at level one to begin. You'll get your opaque uh, player cube that'll go on your trigger meter. That'll go at level three to start off with. So you've got that situated there. You would then get, you have the Light Bears deck, you would shuffle that. You would get the Dava Network deck, you can see that, you would shuffle that deck. And just as kind of a, as a point uh, to bring up, you'll notice that there's some optional rules on the back of your leaders that say starting deck. That's for if you're gonna play a deck drafting variant of the game, which you can read about on page 16. And that's where you have eight cards that are directed on your board you start with, and you build a deck of 24. And so if that's a custom mode you wanna go with, you can certainly use that on the back, but otherwise just go ahead and shuffle the decks and we're gonna, we're gonna just draw cards straight up. The other thing you wanna make sure you do is you've got your tile stacks. So let's pretend that, uh, let's pretend that this is uh, not happened yet. So we've got our Sands of Vara stack. We've got our Genesis Circuit stack. You go ahead and if you need to do a, a wash shuffle or whatever you need to do to mix those tiles up and go ahead and stack those on opposite sides of the table as well to get them situated. Uh, the other thing you want to do, again, at the beginning of a skirmish, let me make sure I get all set up correctly here. Get our score markers on the board. Uh, we haven't determined our turn order, but we're going to in just a second, but have those tokens handy. You get your D10 and set it to round one. Again, that's it's mostly going to be important in story mode. But let's say for the sake of argument, you're saying, well, you know, let's keep this, uh, let's, let's add a, a timer to our skirmish game. That's an option for you if you want. Say, yeah, let's go for three rounds. Or let's go for five rounds. You can put that limitation on there if uh, if you have a limited amount of time to play or something, or maybe you want to do a really long game and go, you know, eight rounds, nine rounds, you can do that. Uh, so you can go ahead and set that there to keep track of how many rounds you've played through. Uh, at this point, we need to move to the, the open the rift phase of setup is what's called in the, in the book. So this is where we've got the rift at the center of the table. And this is, uh, it's double sided. You see there's no side indicators on it. So it doesn't really matter how you place the rift. And then we're going to, for Driak, you'll see that his icon here next to his name is the light bears icon. So we're gonna say, all right, we need to find the tile stack that has that icon on it. This is the Sands of Var. This is where he's from. You'll take the top tile of the stack, look at whichever side has the higher influence number. So it looks like three and he's gonna set that aside. This other character comes from the Genesis circuit, the Cable Leviathan. He's going to take the top tile of his stack. He's going to look at both sides. Looks like the five is the highest for him. Look at the two of them. This is how we determine the starting turn order. 
And so it's going to be the red player who picked that five is going to go first. The white player who picked a three is going to go second. So since red is going first, he's going to take his standee, put it on the tile, and he can set it next to the rift however he wants, provided that there's no wall in the way between him and the rift. So let's get that pivoted a little bit here, and now he's good. And then he can also take control of his starting tile uh, for free. Normally, as we talked about in the, the rules of the game, you normally have to spend triggers to control tiles. This is the time you get to do it for free. Driak's going to do the same thing here. He sets his tile somewhere next to the rift. I mean, he could if he wants to get real cozy. He could put it right here if he really wanted to. So you can play aggressive. You can you can open aggressive if you want. I'll just open them on opposites, though. Go here. And as we talked about during the, the rules of the game, since he's got a uh, an agility tile, he'll look at his agility track and level it up by one when he does that free control. So we've got our starting tiles. We've got our starting turn order. We're all situated with our attribute levels. So now we're going to get some cards. And so we're going to draw a hand of four cards. So let me get this going here. One, two, three, four. He gets his hand. I just realized I probably need to set myself to a different player. Let's see. That way I can see all the cards that are going to go into this other character's hand. So we've got our starting hands of four cards. As we talked about during the game rules, you get to prepare a card at the beginning of the game. So sort of, it's like an opening move, if you will. And this is a card where uh, ideally you would look around and you see, oh, then this is what we had during the rules of the game demonstration. Uh, the Dragon Fist Monk has a prepared effect. This is not a hard and fast rule, but it might be a good idea for when you're preparing your first card of the game to look for one with that prepared bonus effect. So I am going to go ahead. I'll put my Dragon Fist Monk out onto the table. This means now I can play him from here or I can leave him there to get that prepared effect continuously as like a passive effect. But remember from that basic energy action, that blue one here, you can play a card from the timeline the same way you can play it from your hand. It's just like a second hand that people can see. Uh, what is the Cable of I think gonna do? He'll look at his hand and he'll say, uh, let's see, I've got a prepared effect on the Esper. So why not? I will go ahead and, and put that here and get a bonus from him. So at this point now, we've got our leaderboard situated with their cubes. We've got the map situated. We've got the scoreboard situated. We've got our hands all in order. So we're ready to start the game. So let's go ahead and go through our phases, top to bottom. Again, if you're following along for the very first time, you've not seen a game played, maybe have that reference card sitting next to you as you're watching the videos. You can sort of see what I'm doing. So for the start phase, the Cable of Ithan goes first. He's gonna look at his tile and he sees, okay, I'm in a will tile. It's got that purple star. I will lock in a purple star. Pass the turn over to Driak. Driak says, I'm in an agility tile, it's green. I will get a green die. We're done with the start phase of the game, or of the round. We go now to the roll phase. Cable of Ithan's gonna roll three dice. He sees, okay, I've got two agility and a power. So I could move a couple times, I could attack. Um, he doesn't have the necessary dice for a two die action here, which uh, he would need an agility and a boost die. Uh, so it looks like it'd be a really move heavy turn. Maybe he's thinking that's not exactly what I have in mind. He can choose to reroll all of the dice or none. He does so and now he says, okay, well, I don't have any agility. Maybe I can still move with my will because if you recall, uh, will lets you use any basic action, that purple one. So he's like, okay, satisfied, I guess. Uh, satisfied or not, he's stuck because when you do that reroll, you have to live with it. You don't get multiple. Um, if we look here, uh, bum, bum, bum. He didn't roll any will dice, so he doesn't get to change them, but that's a, an effect that the Esper would let him have. Let's come over to Driak. He then has his roll face. Very attack heavy, but at the beginning of the game, it's not great because there's no units to attack yet, so that'd be contingent on his opponent actually playing some cards out. Um, so he's probably going to reroll that, I would assume. And he ends with kind of a worse roll, honestly. But he has to live with it because he chose to reroll. So now we're done with the start phase and the roll phase. We get into the action phase and the Cable of Ithan gets to go first. So the Cable of Ithan, he is sitting, if you look at the icon on the top of the tile, he's in a Genesis circuit tile. So what does he do? He needs to go ahead and look at this column of skirmish cards. He needs to play or destroy a unit that has a one die energy action. So just going from the top down, does he have one of those? He does, he has a sentient technology that if he used an energy die to play with the basic action, he could complete that first objective. So he says, okay, that's an option that I've got. Is there something worth more points? Let's see. Control, uh, an agility, an energy, and a boost Genesis circuit tile at once. So right now he has none of those three, because remember he started in a will tile. So maybe he needs to start making some progress toward that. Maybe he kind of puts that in his back pocket, he'll think about it. 
and then place a six tile adjacent to one Genesis circuit tile. That's going to require a lot of movement. Basically, you need to have uh, any of these Genesis circuit tiles, like this one he's standing in. Oops, sorry about the zoom. He needs to have tiles on all sides of it, basically. And if he's the one that does that, he'll get those points. So those are the options from card number one. Card number two, use a unit's two-die action. Well, first of all, he needs to see, do I have a unit that even has a two-die action? Currently, no. Both of the units that he has at his disposal, and the third, I guess, he's got the Esper, all of these are one-die actions. So that's not even an option right now. So he can just ignore that. Then, play a card in any way other than spending an energy or a will die on the basic play action. So what does that mean? Typically, it's going to be a card that helps you play something, or if you go into an energy tile, if you recall from the tile events here, standing an energy tile lets you spend uh, whatever die you want. So like a boost die, for example, to use a play. So that would let him get that second objective here, that play a card in any way other than an energy or will. So right now, he looks at the top of his tile stack and sees, well, there's a boost tile coming up. Maybe there's energy on the other side, but it's not really a guarantee. So it seems like really his best play is that top objective that he identified he can do. So he would go ahead and spend an energy die for the basic action to play a card and get his sentient technology out into his group. And now he has played or destroyed a unit that has a one die energy action. So he completes that, puts it on one of the two boxes there, as you see. He now passes the turn over to Driac. And again, I'm taking this kind of slow. Your game's gonna go much faster than this. He sends it over to Driac. So Driac says, okay, I've got agility, power, boost, and boost. Uh, what can I do? What can I work toward? Uh, play or destroy a unit who has a one die power action. So he says a very similar one, just a different uh, die type to the objective cable of I think completed. Now with the situation over on Driac's side, he doesn't have any dice that let him play cards. So he would either need to use a conversion with his boost to allow him to play uh, or uh, navigate his way into an energy tile. Same thing as, as Cable Leviathan. The question is, does he have a unit with a power action, a one die power action? He does not. So again, this is sort of like the, the flow chart you can use as you're looking at these objectives. Is this something I can even think about right now? No, just ignore it, right? Uh, then control a power, an energy, and a will, Sands of Varitile at once. Well, he has currently, I'm sorry, power, energy, and uh, and will. He has an agility right now, which is not qualifying them there. The next tile on his stack is boost, so it doesn't qualify there. So maybe he even ignores this one. And then of course, it's that similar play a six tile uh, adjacent to a Sands of Var, so doing a surrounding of a tile. So this first card, not really looking great for him. Let's look at uh, reinforce, which is the other one that's in Sands of Var's column right now. Play or destroy a unit whose defense time their max HP is 12 or more. So does he have that? Is it something where maybe he needs to do that conversion we talked about just a little bit ago? Let's look at his, uh, are we looking for 12 or more? Uh, so this guy's got 14 if he were to play it into his group. This one's nine, so no. This one, not, not even close. Uh, and this one we've got right at uh, 12. So if he played his Sage of the Stars or if he played his Dragon Fist Monk, he could complete Reinforce, uh, which might be worthwhile. The other option he has is to take control of a tile with walls that are in or surrounding it on at least five sides. So let's take a look at his tile right now. Uh, it currently has tiles on uh, walls on two sides of it. So he would have to do a lot of work there to get that one completed. It looks like his best option right now is the reinforce top objective. So play or destroy a unit whose defense times max XP is 12 or more. But again, he doesn't have the dice to support that. So what he'll do is spend this to do the basic convert another die to any face. And as I recommended in the uh, the rules there, rules video, uh, I'm going to change it to a will. Because yes, I can use it to play, but maybe I change my mind, I can still pivot on that idea. That's his whole turn. He passes it back to the Cable Leviathan. And the Cable Leviathan says, okay, do I have another unit that I could play for this? Um, no, I don't. So he moves down. Do I need to start controlling some tiles? Well, between the second objective on this card and the third objective on this card, not to mention um, the fact that he doesn't have a unit with a two die action, uh, he has to kind of seek out energy tiles probably. Uh, that was kind of his determination from last round. So what he'll probably do is use this will in place of the agility basic action. So let's get him moving along here. So this one is boost on both sides. So he is stuck with that. And he's looking for boost, agility, and energy. So this is actually kind of a good thing. He'll move in a position in a way where there's no walls in his path, because I'm assuming he would want to move twice. He's entered an uncontrolled tile, so he can spend a trigger from his uh, meter here, and he can control that. And again, that's not an energy, an agility, or a power, so it doesn't affect his track. He can take a second movement, and this is where he wants to be, actually. Um, so while that power might be attractive, 
He probably wants that energy so he can play some cards. Now here's here's the rub on how he's going to place this. Uh, I briefly mentioned reach before and how it's your tile plus three if you want to affect other people. If he were to place the tile here, he would be his tile plus one, two, three, and he would not be able to reach react to affect him if you want to do attacks or anything like that. So what he probably would want to do is place it like this when he discovers this tile so he can go one, two, three, and still affect react. And so that's what he'll do when he places this tile, spend another trigger, and control it. Uh-oh. Tabletop Simulator can be a little finicky sometimes, but it's okay. And also, this is available uh, for free on Tabletop Simulator. Like, if you want to play skirmishes with your friends, it's there. The only thing that's not in here for free is the story guide. Uh, but you can skirmish all day long with your friends, learn the game, especially right now where it's you know it's tough to get together in person. It'd be a great opportunity. So maybe watch for it to be on sale. It goes on sale uh, quite a bit, but it's a great value even if, if you buy it full price. So what did we do here? He moved, he controlled two tiles and spent two triggers in doing so. You'll see that he's got energy. So he will go ahead and level up his energy. Did that get him anything? It moved him very close to the second objective on the Genesis circuit card, which is an agility, energy, and boost tile at the same time. He's got two or three for that. So he's, he's doing well there. Uh, and now it's just a matter of uh, either surrounding a tile or getting that, uh, that agility one, and he could get closer to completing this card. He passes the turn back to Driak, who did a conversion, because he was going to play one of his cards here. So let's see. I guess the question is, does he play or does he try to go for a move like the Leviathan just did and kind of hunt down an energy tile? And maybe he's feeling adventurous and he wants to do that first before he resorts to using that will on a play. So let's do a very, very similar turn. He's probably also going to try to hover around close within reach. So let's see this first one. It's a boost or it's a power. Um, what is he looking for on his Sands of Vara card? Power, energy, and will. So he's probably going to keep that power as his option here. Let's see, how can he do this? Probably move here, and he'll add a control token by spending a trigger once again. Now he's at level two power. He'll do a second move. He doesn't get the energy he's looking for. And again, he gets a position, so there's a wall here, um, but not in his way, because the walls will get in the way of reaching his opponent. He can still reach his opponent. Um, let's just say he'll go ahead and control that too. That'll spend a trigger again. Will does not give you uh, an attribute increase. And so what has he done? He has power and will under his control. He just needs to hunt down an energy tile in the Sands of R to complete that second objective. He passes the turn back to the Cable of Iathan. Cable of Iathan is now in an energy tile, which if you recall that event, says that while he's occupying the tile, he can use any die for the basic uh, energy action. And so that's one of his objectives here. So if he does that twice, he's going to complete both boxes on uh, that bottom half of conf uh, Confluence. So uh, he's going to do that, I think. First with this boost. Again, it's any die can, can play a card. I think he's going to beef this group up, probably. Um, let's see. None of the units are going to help him with his first objective, which is the playing uh, a unit with an energy action, but that's okay. He'll play his Vector Engineer, uh, who's quite a hardy unit. And so since he has played a card in any way other than spending an energy or a will on the basic action, he is going to, sorry, I had a computer alert there. Uh, he is going to put a token onto one of those boxes on Confluence. So, boom, halfway done with that part of the objective. You also notice that there's no points for having uh, tokens on these boxes. So some of them have very unusual scoring methods, but the scoring method for the uh, special at the bottom does some uh, some scaling based on how many tokens you have there. So it's almost like the card has area control in a way. So uh, he did that. That's his whole turn. We go back to Driak. Driak said, well darn, I was kind of hoping I could hunt down an energy tile. So at this point, do I start doing some attacking? Uh, because there's certainly units over here to attack. Because uh, I've got a power die and I've got level two power, so I can roll two dice. Uh, or do I use this will die to move around some more and maybe hope for an energy tile like I was wanting? He looks at his objectives. Player destroy a unit with a power die for its action. Well, neither of these have that, so that's not great. Uh, he needs to certainly again find the energy tile. He needs to place a lot of tiles. He needs to destroy units with lots of HP. Uh, he could possibly do that. He would need to roll really well on two dice, though, to destroy. This guy, he would need to roll 18, which is impossible to destroy it. He could do some chip damage to it. Uh, this one, he would need to roll a 15. But again, he could do chip damage to it. But 
uh, he can't immediately complete this top objective with destruction. Uh, the other idea would be to get a lot of walls around a particular tile. So it seems like if he wants to maximize this turn, he's probably going to need to devote some time to hunting down the energy tile like he was like he was wanting. So he looks at the map and he realizes, well, I kind of walled myself off because really what he should have wanted to do is like surround all skies map with tiles for this bottom objective, placing a six tile adjacent to one Sansevara. So a little bit of a goof there, but that's okay. So maybe he uh, just decides that he's going to surround a different tile instead and just do some movement. So he'll spend his will to move. And he'll go one space. Looks like he's stuck with power for this one. And probably not control it because he's only got one trigger left and he really wants to control an energy if he can pull one up. Uh, this one's not an energy, but he sees that the next one will be for next round when he gets to move again. So the question is, does he spend this last trigger controlling that agility one? Um, maybe not, actually. Um, the other problem that I guess he's running into is that now he has got one, two, three. He is not in reach of his opponent. The good thing, because there's a wall, you see the series of walls here. The good news is his opponent doesn't have reach on him either. So he's done with his turn. It was unfortunately a bit of a bust. Um, and this, this power die is, is going to be certainly a bust as well. We come back to the Cable Leviathan, who, again, he's sitting in the energy tile. He can use any die to play cards. So he's probably going to finish that plan of his and play a card. Um, let's see, does he play from his timeline or his hand is the question. Let's just say he plays his action card so we can get one of those resolved. So with Analyze Futures, he's going to pick a deck and reveal four cards from it. And then he's going to destroy all the active copies of them anywhere, meaning that reach is not a factor here. And if he can pass an energy check with an eight difficulty, he can prepare one of those cards he revealed. How's his energy looking? Oh, he's got two dice. So he'll take two of his spent dice for the check, add up the numbers on them. Uh, looks like he has a nine on there. And for energy, he doesn't have any bonuses. You'll see that there's some bonuses to energy checks if you've got level two power or level two in agility. But he still rolled it naturally, so he's good. So certainly, since we're destroying copies of cards, there's only one card he could possibly hit on the table, which is the Dragonfist Monk. So he will pull four cards off of the Light Bear's deck and reveal them. And let's see if he gets a Dragonfist Monk. Unfortunately, not. But since he passed that check on his card, prepare a revealed card, he can choose any one of these cards that he just revealed to essentially kind of steal from that deck and put into his timeline. Um, this is this is a pretty good card, although. Isn't he looking for a particular unit type? Energy action units? Oh, there are none. Uh, is there anything else special he's looking for? Oh, units with a two-die action. None of those either. So well, he'll probably just take this one. When you reveal cards, you reveal them left to right, and then you uh, discard them in the order they were revealed. So again, left to right. So that's done. He managed to, again, he played a card in any way other than spending a, an energy or a will on the basic play action. So he has completed this. Looking at this... Uh, <laughs> Scoring so far, White is in dire need of a, of a comeback. He needs to start catching up and getting some points here. I mean, luckily, nothing's actually been scored yet, so uh, there's there's still time to, to make some moves. Cable of Ithens out of dice. Driak is then now looking at, well, I've got a power action to attack, but I can't even reach anything because I'm too far away. So what does he do? He's got this die sitting here. Uh, well, you can spend any die to rest. So he'll go ahead and do that. Spend this. As you see the rest here where it says any die. You can gain two triggers. He needed triggers anyway. He needed to do some replenishing. So he's he's okay with that. So now, uh, if you're following along your reference card, you go to the end phase. This is where each player can prepare a card from their hand to their timeline. And they have to discard the rest and draw back to three. And uh, let's do that first. So Cable of Ithan doesn't have anything to prepare. He actually emptied out his hand. Driak, on the other hand, maybe looks around. Is there anything that's going to be really helpful to me? Maybe this remote control of tiles is something I want to hang on to on the Sand Spear Knight. So he hangs on to that. Discards those other two cards and he will get three back. Okay, he gets that new hand. Oh, this resolved. Okay, one, two, three. Cable of Ithan gets his new hand. Oh, he's got duplicates. That's, that's too bad. Although I think he wants those. He wants energy die units, so that's actually gonna help him. So we've got that. We then look at the board. Does anyone have any boost tiles? Uh, yes, red has a boost tile, meaning he gets one trigger from controlling a boost tile. Uh, going back to our reference card, the rift is present, so we must have someone roll a die and flip tiles that match that result. Drak went last, that's usually who I like to have do it, is whoever went last. So all the boost tiles on the board will flip over. So we top to bottom, there's one here. Flip it over, 
it's still a boost tile. No great loss there for the red player. Uh, we come here, adjust attribute tracks as necessary. Not really necessary. Let's talk about turn order since people have moved around. We have the cable of Ithan is in the preparatory compound that's got a three. We've got the burning stair with a three for the white player. Uh, so we'll use alphabetical order P before T. And so it's going to be the same turn order, red and then white. Uh, no scoring in this first round, but uh, but red player is getting close in, in his world. So let us advance the round here. I'll probably play one more round as just, again, a demonstration of the flow of the game, just so you can get an idea of it, and then wrap this up. So each player in order, he gets an energy die because he is in an energy tile. White player gets an agility because he is an agility tile. We do our roll. Oh, boy. So that's a lot of movement, which I guess kind of he wants to do. He does want to get some controls and placing lots of tiles. So maybe he's okay with this, actually. Uh, let's look at the uh, Driac player's roll. Not as good. A lot of boosts there. So he's going to do his reroll. Uh, my boy is moving. <laughs> he's got all agility. Uh, so he, he's just going to dash around the, the board quite a bit. You know, you notice here, he's got an agility action that lets him reveal a unit from his hand and use its action. So that might be something, a little sly play that he does here using his leader's uh, ability there. So let's go over to the Cable of Ithan. He gets first dibs. What are his priorities? Uh, well, he wants to play another energy die unit, which he, we know that he has. He just drew two of them, actually. He also needs to find the last tile that will help him complete this set. What did he have already? He had energy and he had boost controlled. So he just needs to find an agility tile. Um, so hopefully he can find one of those. He needs to place a, a sixth tile adjacent to a Genesis circuit tile. So if he could get this tile surrounded on both sides, then he would complete that objective. That wall is going to be pesky in getting that done, though. Uh, so he's And he's got a wall here, too. So getting that done is going to be a chore. Um, what does he have here? Using its two die action. Did he draw a unit with a two die action? Oh, the Seeker drone has that. So um, he's not going to be able to do that this turn because he doesn't have the the boost dice to support that. You know what? He could. I could show you guys a little bit of a some gymnastics here. So he actually could do this. He could he could complete that. Let's let's work under that premise. So since he's sitting in an energy tile, he can use any die to play a card like he had been doing last round. So he'll play one of these secret drums. His group is full now. His group is full. Um, he has played a unit with a one die energy action. So he gets to place a token here. He's that much closer to completing this card. Uh, so that's it. That's all for his turn. Let's go to Driak, who's just going to be a dashing madman. What's he trying to complete on the board? He wants a Sands of Varatile to be uh, surrounded on all sides, which he can do immediately with a movement. He wants to control, he needs an energy tile because he already has a power and a will. So he could control two objectives with his next move because we can see on the top of the tile stack, he's got an energy tile on deck. So he's good. So uh, he's going to complete a bunch of his card here. The question is, is he just going to stay in that energy tile so maybe he can play a bunch of cards, uh, which, which might be what he does. So let's go ahead and have him do his move first. So he looks at this tile and says, you know, I could move here first and then here uh, or i could just move here and sit in the energy and he is going to have to pick what space he moves to so to play it safe he's just going to do this how will he position that maybe something like this so he will spend a trigger to control an energy tile he just completed oh and he gets a level in energy of course He's just completed a couple of objectives, right? He's control. He has control of a power, an energy, and a will tile in the Sands of Ara, and he placed a six tile adjacent to a single Sands of Ara tile. So he is actually starting to get some progress here, some forward, some forward motion. Let's see. Unfortunately, he's got that pesky objective, this bottom one, take control of a tile with walls in or surrounding it on five sides that's going to be a really tough objective it usually is um, he doesn't have any great options for that quite yet so that's his turn he did his tile control got a lot of value out of it and now he's going to have to start playing some units uh, does he have the units to support that no it looks like he's really just got dragon fist monk so he can complete this the top objective once for this round but that's going to be it probably let's go back to our man who's going to do some complicated stuff 
So using units two die action was what I wanted to have him do. The two die action for the secret drone is an energy and a boost. So it looks like, you know, based on these dice, he can't do it. Unless, if we look here, Will lets us do any basic action, including the dice conversion. So let's have him do this. Dice conversion, put that to a boost. And now next turn, when it comes back to him, he'll be able to do the secret drones, energy and boost action, because he now has energy and a boost die. That's his whole turn, though. So it's kind of a big, big commitment here with this play. Uh, go back to Driak, who's got all these agility dice. But since he is sitting in an energy tile, he can play cards. So he'll go ahead and play that uh, Dragon Fist Monk, since he knows it's going to help him complete this top objective. He played or destroyed a unit whose defense times maximum HP was 12 or greater. Dragon Fist was 14. So now we've got him. He's really starting to, to do some things here. This this isn't looking so lopsided with our token distribution. Uh, that's, that's his whole turn. We come back here to the Cable Leviathan, who's now going to do that thing that we said. He's going to use the Secret Drone's two die action, control a tile and another one adjacent to it. So what's within his reach? He's already got control of all of these. His reach is one, two, three. Um, hmm. But as you see, he could go one, two, three. He's got reach on these that Driak has control over. And this doesn't say control uncontrolled tiles. This says control tiles. So he's going to do that. And this is a way that you can actually overwrite people. This is going to give us an opportunity to, to talk about a couple of things, actually. So first, let's, let's resolve this effect. Uh, he's going to control two tiles. So he's going to spend both of his triggers that are needed to do so, because it's one each. So let's get those tokens. And he's going to be a real jerk and take these tiles over. So one and two, because they're both within his reach. One, two, three tiles away. So Driak says that's a real bummer, because then that makes him lose a will tile, which you know it's all, that's already bad, but it makes him lose an agility tile. And in fact, he drops a level in that attribute. So that action has resolved, meaning we did use a unit's two die action. So he is one away from completing that card. Since you know he's out of dice, he can't finish it this round. But next round, uh, almost certainly he could do some dice manipulation to finish that. So that card's probably going to end next round, even though we're not going to play that one out. Um, let's see. But you see we've destroyed some tokens here as part of this. You destroyed Driak's tokens in overriding them. So now he can react if he wants. So after an enemy's action destroys your card or token, and that's no matter how many tokens, he doesn't get to react twice, uh, he can spend a trigger to either do the basic reactions on the reference card, or he can do his reaction, which is warping to a tile and potentially destroying adjacent uh, control tokens. The problem is he needs a 10 for that secondary effect on there, and you definitely can't roll a 10 on one die, because that's what he'd be rolling with his agility. So he's kind of stuck. Uh, so he could do a warp if he wants, spend a trigger to warp. If he wants to... Uh, get in reach for some reason, move around if he's trying to get to a particular objective, maybe. Um, he could he could try to warp and then move in a way that would help him finish the Genesis circuit. Like he could cross over to Genesis circuit and try to complete the objective of the surrounding a tile. That would be a bit of a stretch, potentially. So maybe he'll just take the basic one. And so the basic one is he spends a trigger, he draws two cards, and maybe this will give him something he really needs, like a unit with a power action. Uh, well, he had one, so that's good. Um, and then he rolls an agility check with uh, one die. Here's the good news. So, so here's a good news, bad news situation. Bad news first, he rolled a three, which is obviously not five. That's the bad news. The good news, though, if you look at Driax current attribute track. With his power level, he gets a plus one to agility checks. And with his energy level, he gets a plus one to agility checks. So actually, he did roll a five. So with that, what does that mean? He gets to regain two triggers. So he both refunds the one he just spent and gets one on top of it. So not too bad for having that seeker drone really mess with his, uh, his control tokens. The interesting thing about this is in a two-player game, when you react, it also means that you get to act immediately after. You get to do kind of a one-two punch because you're reacting to the other person's action. So what are we going to do? Uh, again, he's got an energy tile he's in, so he, play a, oh, I'm sorry, so he can play a card. He has his leader's action that lets him reveal a unit if he wants to do a one-die action and then discard the unit, um, which I don't know. I think he really just wants to play. I think he really wants to play the Inferno Weaver. So let's play the Inferno Weaver into the group. That is a power die action. So he has played a unit that has that. 
And all of a sudden, somehow, he is one token away from completing his card first, whereas he was behind before. So really nice swing here for, for Dreax player. Uh, so he's done with his turn there. And now we start talking about dice economy for a second, because the Cable Leviathan used a two die action, which means though he went first in the round and he was going to run out anyway before the other player, uh, he is going to basically have one less action because he basically uh, did three actions instead of four. So Driak gets his fourth action. The question is then, does he play yet another card? I don't think he has another power unit, so he can't complete this. Uh, he can't destroy a unit with a power die because there's not really one for him to target. I guess, you know, technically speaking, he could attack his own unit and be really cheeky about this. Because it doesn't it doesn't say that it has to be an enemy unit. So if he uh if he wanted to, did he have a way to attack with an agility? Does he have some sort of replacement action? No, it doesn't look like he can. Yeah, he's kind of stuck with this agility. So it's either going to be moving around and controlling stuff or just play a card. You know what? He's going to move so that we can see what the... Because we've already seen the energy event used to great, uh, great value here in this demo. Let's look at the agility tile event. So he's going to move here with his first move. And since he's got so many triggers, he's going to go ahead and control this too. Get back some agility. Now, with his second move... When you move out of an agility tile, you can warp to a tile in reach and control it. It's going to cost you a trigger, but that means you can take over control of a tile. So maybe, you know what, he's like, I'm doing well in Sanzavara. I maybe want to get some, some tokens over on these cards before they get finished up. So he says, I'm going to warp to a tile in reach, which would be one, two, three, and I'm going to take this tile over too. Boom. So now that has destroyed a token of the Cable Leviathan. And if Driak totally meant to do this, he was probably watching his opponent's trigger meter and saw that it was empty, meaning that he can do whatever he wants and the Cable Leviathan can't react to it. So in this case, he destroyed a token, Driak did, and Cable Leviathan can do nothing about it. Did this get him any objectives in that world? Uh, no, it did not. But uh, that completes the action phase of the round, so let's do end phase meaning a uh, red player would prepare a card. Um, ooh, plus one to check results. That seems really good. So he's going to keep that. Discard this. He's going to draw three back. Get his hand situated. Um, oh, he's got a lot of cards to choose from. Ooh, plus one defense to all the units in my group. That's pretty good. Uh, anything better? Hmm. Let's just, yeah, let's do that. Why not? I mean, he, you can prepare whatever cards you want. You can prepare any card that's in your hand. Uh, but prepared bonus effects are often really nice. So those cards. Oh, two phoenixes. Hmm, interesting. Uh, then we look. Uh, let me help follow along. End phase. We've prepared. We've discarded. We've drawn back. We also look boost, uh, boost tiles under control. What are we looking at here? Red has one, so he's going to get a trigger. Okay. Now we do the rift. Last player to act was, was Driak, so he'll do a roll here. Power tiles. Top to bottom, left to right. This one flips. This one flips. Ooh, Driak loses a power. So that'll go down. Okay, back to our card. Adjust our attribute tracks. We did that. Uh, we don't have any objectives yet because we don't have the backs of these cards at the moment because they haven't been completed yet. So now that means uh, we look at turn order. So Driak has moved into a five compared to the Cable of Ithens three. So now not only... Did Driak get to do a react and an action back to back? And it was a fourth action that was in response to only three from the Leviathan. He's also get to, gonna get to go first in round three. So you gotta think about your positioning, you gotta think about your dice economy when it comes to what's happening on both the map and on those those leaderboards. So anyway, this is two rounds of a skirmish. Uh, you know, I took it nice and slow so I can explain it to you. When you're playing it, it's gonna go much, much faster than this. Uh, and so what I would like to invite you to do is on Board Game Geek, we've got threads there for uh, asking questions. Uh, you can certainly drop by our Discord as well, which I can provide a link for in the description of this video. Uh, there's always people in there willing to answer your questions, uh, including myself. And for now, I would invite you to start up a skirmish. Again, I would advise you to maybe play with just these two cards at first to get your bearings, and then play a, a full-on skirmish that has those additional cards. 
but uh, go ahead, just dive in. This is a game where uh, with all of the moving pieces, it might feel a little overwhelming, but once you're just sort of rolling the dice and spending them to do stuff, uh, it really should just fall into place for you. In the meantime, uh, again, this is uh, Stephen with Fatal, and I'm, I'm so glad to see that the, there's many people getting the games and enjoying the, the visual component of them. And now I really want to see a lot of those gameplay pictures and videos coming out. So hopefully this has been helpful and I will see you around the internet.